The last deck I've opted to showcase from Pro Tour Either Revolt is Ken Yuku Hiro's Black Green Constrictor, which he went 9-1 with in the constructed portion of the tournament. Let's take a look at what this deck can do. Here's our match with Ken Yuku Hiro's Black Green Constrictor deck. We've won the die roll, and we are going to play first. Alright, this hand's not that bad at all. We've got a turn 2 Long Tusk Cub, turn 3 Rishkar with a Fatal Push in hand, so I think we're going to definitely keep this. No turn 2 Constrictor is sad face, of course, but hey, you can't always have your Constrictor on turn 2. Opponent leads with Forest into Traverse the Olvenwald. Traverse is usually a sign of a black-green Delirium deck, and indeed they do go ahead and get a Swamp. Ooh, a Green Belt Rampager, which means I'm going to go ahead and play a Forest this turn so that on a following turn I can actually just cast out uh, the Rampager all with green mana if I really want to. Fatal push from the opponent takes care of my Long Tusk Cub. We draw another Fatal push ourselves. Let's go ahead and just uh, keep Rampage in here. Pretty funny. Three green sources, so with no energy I'm able to play the green belt Rampager, play it again, and then finally play it one more time and use up the two energy. Notably, this is not a May. If you have the two energy, you have to pay. All right, another Traverse from the opponent into another land. And this time they have a Winding Constrictor. A good fatal push target for us, for sure. We're going to go ahead and play out Rishgar pre-combat to pump up our Rampager. Attack in for four. And we're going to go ahead and just fatal push their Winding Constrictor right now before... Anything happens, I don't want to enable their own revolt to kill my Rishkar. Alright, another Winding Constrictor into probably a Walking Ballista, I would imagine. Yes, indeed. Grasp of Darkness, the draw here for us. Now, with only two sources of black, I can't cast both Grasp and Fatal Push, but I think we're okay here. Um, again, I think I just like Fatal Pushing the Winding Constrictor and then playing my Harvester as well. I could also have Fatal pushed the Walking Ballista, make them use their mana up, but they don't have any good blocks here. Putting them down to 9 life seems pretty nice for me. And what I can do is I can next turn activate Hissing Quagmire and use the Quagmire to crew the Harvester if I really want to. Mind Rack Demon from the opponent. Alright, that's fine. And they do hit their fourth card type in the graveyard to enable Delirium. Let's see. Ruinous Path to the Slaughter, Tireless Tracker. Alright, so it looks like a pretty standard green-black Delirium list from the opponent. Either hub the draw here for us. Um, so what is the game plan? Remember, we can use Rishkar for mana in a pinch if necessary, I think. I think we use the Harvester to, rather the Rishkar to crew the Harvester and then attack with both the Harvester and the Rampager here. Grasp of Darkness can take care of that pesky Mind Rack Demon. Uh, I can also consider using the Grasp on the Walking Ballista and then crewing the Harvester with Rishkar and just attacking because their Mind Rack Demon can only bounce off either of my creatures, but... I think I like going like this. Let's crew up. Attack in with both. And of course the Mind Rack Demon does block. Now I have to act first because I don't want to put any damage on my Rampager. And we're going to go ahead and pay an energy here to gain some lifelink. I don't see a reason not to given the fact that we have an Ether Hub to give us another energy anyways. The Flyer is going to be the real boon here in this game. Um, it can be Fatal Pushed, though, if they have another one, because they can always activate their Walking Ballista twice to, to kill itself, um, or at least put it in the graveyard, which enables Revolt. Looks like they're just playing another Mind Rack Demon, though. All right. Four more cards milled, three lands, and a Glint Sleeve Siphoner. And we're pretty close to just killing the opponent. I can put him to three here. 
winding constrictor to draw for me now. Hmm. Play the constrictor. Crew up the harvester and attack with all. They get to kill my rampager, but I do deal them three damage and kill their walking ballista in the process. That's almost certainly worth it. So let's go with that. Luckily, none of my creatures are small enough for the walking ballista to kill. Okay, and it looks like they're going to shoot my harvester instead of my rampager, which makes sense. The, um, they're more interested in killing the flyer here. All right, kills my harvester, sacks to deal one point of damage to me, and the opponent's at three life now, so I have two lethal creatures in the form of rampager and rishkar, and then I can animate the hissing quagmire uh, to get another lethal threat in conjunction with the constrictor. All right, Rishkar from the opponent, feigning a Grasp of Darkness, perhaps. They could have it, of course, but pretty sure we still just go for it in either case. Um, speaking of either, a tune with either. We're going to actually cast that prior to attacking. That way I get an additional energy from my Winding Constrictor. Not that that is entirely relevant, but... Okay, um... Yeah, and I think we're just gonna go for it. Obviously, if they have the Grasp of Darkness, it's not going to be great for me, but if they don't, then we just win. Because the Mind Rack Demon eats my Rampager, the Rishkar eats my Winding Constrictor, the Grasp of Darkness kills the... kills the Rishkar, and then they take two. And it looks like they do, in fact, have it. All right, so we're going to be in a little bit of a rough position here. Uh, the opponent is at one life, yes, but they have, well, two creatures to my Hissing Quagmire. And they also have the Verdurous Gear Hulk. Okay, and I think it was completely correct to go for it, even though they were representing um, the Grasp. All right, another Winding Constrictor off the top for me. Now this is a forced block, so we definitely want to attack here. We're trading our 2-2 land for one of their 5-5s, five and they have no cards in their hands, so any creature I draw, like this Winding Constrictor, is a potential lethal threat. So for instance, if they just draw another land here, then they only can attack with one creature. Although I am falling down to 10 at this point, which means Ooh, another Mind Rack Demon. All right. And that's going to do it. Our opponent's going to kill us with the uh, the old Mind Rack Demon draw. All right. So I guess we'll scoop this up and look to go to uh, a second game. So Green Black Mirror. Although they have a lot more top end, it would assume, or it would appear. Um, I do like the Gear Hulk. Obnixilis and Murderers seem interesting, as do the Transgress, the Mines. Uh, this is probably not the matchup for Sky Sovereign. I think Fatal Push could also be another consideration as well. I do like the murders for their fatter, fatter, uh, larger creatures. Gear Hulk as well. What can I end up taking out? I'm not the biggest fan of the Grasp of Darknesses. They're okay, but they're not great. God, I just feel like Obnixilis has to be great in this matchup. Um, this is interesting. As somebody who hasn't played this deck before, going into the sideboarding options blind is is a unique experience, of course. I have to imagine the Transgress the Mines are fine. I just don't know what I would want to take out in, you know, in their place. I still have to take out one card here as it is. Interesting. Maybe a Fatal Push. Fatal Push not the best versus the opponent. It takes care of the Winding Constrictors, which is great, but it doesn't really do anything else unless Revolt uh, is enabled. 
that has to be incorrect though. You know, it, it almost feels like that I want to add both the other fatal pushes and take out some number of other creatures. Like Gear Hulk's great, but maybe I can shave one. Rishgar is great too, but maybe I can also shave one of those. And these Obnixiluses. Ugh, I really want to get those in, because it just feels like if I resolve an Obnixilis, it's just too much card advantage for the opponent to deal with. That being said, the, the opponent is running to the slaughter. We saw that, so maybe, maybe we can just ship it like this and uh, see if we can take down game two. All right, game two, our green-black Winding Constrictor deck versus the opponent's green-black Delirium. And if this was an untapped land, I would happily keep it, but as I'm on the play, I don't think I can, and we have to go down to six, even though we have double the tune with either. This is just a little bit too slow, I think. That being said, it does have three good removal spells, but I think I want to get something that's a little bit more capable, and this hand is great. We have the turn one, a tune with either to find a swamp, turn two, uh, either Winding Constrictor or Glint Sleeve Siphoner to start, well, drawing extra cards or getting extra value. Looks like the opponent is jo joining me on a mulligan train here. They're on a five currently. And it doesn't matter if I top or bottom. Um, since we're on the play, I'm just going to shuffle whatever card is on top anyways. So let's go with the turn one and tune. Let's get our swamp. And honestly, this unless the opponent has a lot of removal in their opening hand, uh, we, we are going to be in great shape. Another tune, not a bad draw. I think I'm going to lead with the Siphoner. I'd rather them Fatal push that than my Winding Constrictor. And I still can play the Winding Constrictor next turn. All right, Grasp of Darkness takes care of the Siphoner. That's fine. We're going to a tune here for another green source. And yeah, we're, I'm just going to keep playing Siphoners out. Since we have so much energy, uh, we can just start drawing extra cards as long as the, the Siphoner stays on the battlefield. All right, look, looks like another Grasp to take out my other Siphoner. And I'm just going to keep playing them out. If they have another removal spell, so be it. But if at any time this stays alive, then I just get extra cards. And there we go. Grim Flare, the, the play for the opponent. Uh, we actually get to attack in here after playing the Winding Constructor. I want to play the Winding Constructor here first so that I get an extra energy when I attack. Go up to 7 energy. And of course with Menace, they can't block here, the Grim Flare. And then, uh, wow, Long Tusk Cub is actually quite kind of insane here with as much energy as I have. Anytime that I use 2 energy, I'm going to get 2 1-1 one -one counters on my Long Tusk Cub uh, in conjunction with the Winding Constrictor, so that's that's really gross. Especially when the opponent's on a mulligan to five. Their resources are just going to be really slammed. I, I knew the Winding Constrictor was great. I just didn't realize how great it was uh, in this style of deck. Or just in this style of format, really, where energy counters such a such a useful and prevalent thing. Alright, Evolving Wilds from the opponent finds themselves a forest. They do have a Hissing Quagmire to trade away with Long Tusk Cub, but I do have a backup in hand. Plus, Walking Ballista here, also quite nice. Uh, with only two card types in their graveyard currently, I'm not too concerned about Delirium. Oh, but speak of Delirium, there's a Mind Rack Demon. Currently, they have Instant Land in their graveyard. Let's see what other card types they might hit here. Trigger does resolve. Mind Rack Demon, a very good card. Really makes these Delirium decks tick. A little bit sad now that Emrakul is out of the format, of course, but these decks still showing off their potential. Alright, and they actually did not hit two card types, so the opponent's going to take a bit of damage on their own upkeep from their uh, Mind Rack Demon. They only have creature land in instant. Remember, if they do not have delirium, it deals, well, rather they lose four life at the beginning of their upkeep. It's a good, uh, good thing for us. In fact, I might just play walking ballista and pass. That's probably not correct. Let's draw an extra card first and see what happens. But hey, looking real good. Looking real good. 
All right, either hub actually gives us two energy back. Uh, I'll play the walking ballista as a 3-3. Three, three. And go ahead and just shoot down there, Grim Flare. Now I could attack with the Cub. Um, forces me to use four of my energy, which I think is absolutely fine. Especially since we gain two on attack with the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Yep. All right, pay two energy, get two counters. Pay two energy, get two counters. And two cards in your hand, opponent. You're going to need some real nice ones to get back from this game. All right, and that's going to be a very nice game, too, there for us. Again, the opponent was on a mulligan to five, but we just had so many uh, glint sleeve siphoners to get value. They had removal spells for our first two, but the third one stuck. And after that, we were just drawing two cards to turn our own personal Phyrexian Arena. Uh, on the draw, I could bring back the Grasp of Darknesses. They are pretty good versus Grim Flare and Winding Constrictor, of course. Um, could also bring in Transgress the Mind. It's possible I'm supposed to take out some number of Walking Ballista, because even though this card is great, you don't want to be gl uh, glutted on them. You don't have too many. I think I'm okay taking out a Walking Ballista here and maybe bringing in a Transgress the Mind. In fact, taking out two and doing two. You guys can tell me in the comments if this is wrong, but this is what I'm going to roll with. So let's go to a game three. Game three here, Black Green Constrictor versus Black Green Delirium. We are on the draw and we have a nice hand for sure. Would like to draw <laughs> a Fatal Push, but then when isn't that the case? Um, I think we go greedy, right? We go turn two Winding Constrictor, hope it survives, turn three Rishkar. That's the dream anyways, and then we get to start playing Long Tusk Cubs. I don't have any way to gain energy yet, but we are on the draw, so I do have some time. Well, speaking of ways to gain energy, Drew and a Tune with you. They're going to go ahead and just ram that out. Uh, we already have, well, we have two black and two green already. What is more relevant here? Uh, it's got to be the green, right? We have green, pel green belt rampagers, Verdus gear hulk. I do have murder in the deck now, but I do already have double black. So let's get a green source. Opponent led off with hissing quagmire. Let's see what they can do on turn two. The problem here, being on the draw, is that I don't have any removal. So if the opponent just goes winding constrictor into their own Rishkar, I'm in a real bad spot. If they just pass the turn, I. Th I think I lead with Long Tusk Cub. Um, this, even the Black Green Delirium deck has many two drops, and them just passing would probably signify a lot of removal. And I would much rather have a Long Tusk Cub get removed than um, than my Winding Constrictor. All right, looks like they're gonna do something here though. A Walking Ballista on one. All right, that's not the scariest thing. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to play out my turn two Winding Constrictor. And uh, almost certainly they're going to have some form of removal. But if they do not, then I'm going to be a happy, 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 happy Numat the Nummy. Ooh, just a Winding Constrictor of their own and a pass. All right, this is our chance. Let's see if this Rishkar goes off with the Winding Constrictor, and indeed it does. So I get to actually attack here for four on turn three. Very nice curve. In fact, I can even play Verdurus Gear Hulk next turn. All right, looks like the opponent had their own <laughs> Rishkar to go off. This is fine. Um, the Triple Cub is very awkward, of course, but I get to play out my Gear Hulk and put a counter on all of my creatures. Their Verdurus Gear Hulk can't kill mine yet. I'm tapping the Winding Constrictor for mana because I don't want to attack with it. And if I make the... Hmm. Well, if I put two counters on Rishgar, he becomes a 7-7, seven, seven, which still can't actually attack very well into the opponent's board. So let's just put a one on it and two on the gear hulk. 
And I actually think attacking with my Rishkar here is good. Because I want to trade it off with their Winding Constrictor. It's the Winding Constrictor that's doing a lot of the damage here. And this is absolutely fine with me. Heroic Intervention. Wow, what a sideboard card. That's kind of sweet. All right. Hadn't seen Heroic Intervention in any of the lists, but... Maybe that's a, a more commonplace sideboard card these days. So permanent to control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Again, glad I attacked with the Rish card there and not my Winding Constrictor because the Constrictor is much better. Oof! And they drew a fatal push for my Constrictor. Now the game's looking a lot worse for us, of course. As the opponent plays another Walking Ballista. Okay, good draw for me. Obviously, and I actually get to attack in pretty nicely here for 7. The Gear Hulk having Trample is a huge boon for us. Let's take a look at what they got in their hand first before I decide to Fatal Push. And they have a Mind Rack Demon and a Noxious Gear Hulk. So... <laughs> It's actually a little bit tempting to take the Mind Rack Demon because they can cast it next turn. Um, because if I Fatal Push their Winding Constrictor, then they don't actually have the mana to cast the Noxious. But it's probably safest just to take the Gear Hulk and then Fatal Push their, their Winding Constrictor. Which means I do get to play the, the Mind Rack Demon, but I think that's correct. Gosh, I want to get super greedy and take the Mind Rack Demon. But then if they draw a land, I, I instantly lose, so... We'll take the Gear Hulk. We'll Fatal Push the Constrictor. Hopefully, hopefully, that was the right play. I imagine their Demon is coming down. We're going to want to draw another removal spell, if possible. Let's see if they hit Delirium. They do this time. If they also did not hit Delirium, they would probably have to sack one of their Winding Ballistas not to take 4 damage. Alright, so the opponent's Hellbent now. And they're actually attacking me for 5. Okay. Um... Hmm. This is a pretty easy attack on my part, I feel like. And then just play out double cub. Because I also don't mind if they block with their Mind Rack Demon and then use one of their uh, Ballista to finish it off. That means I'm getting a 2 for 1, which seems like pretty good value. I am a little concerned though, because if I don't find a way to deal with one of their Ballistas, I'm going to be in real bad shape. Okay, so the opponent's just going to fall down to 2 here. Seems fine for me. And remember, they're on the top deck. As am I, of course, but... My 7-7 seven, seven Trampler seems to be doing a nice amount of work. I am uh, very interested to see how this game plays out. Okay, they're just passing now, playing their Blooming Marsh. Swamp, not what we wanted to draw. In fact, I don't even think I want to attack with the Gear Hulk anymore, but the problem with that is... Every turn that I'm not doing anything, they're getting extra counters on their Ballista. Man, I wish I had left those Ballistas in now, because... Anytime I draw one of those Ballistas, it's lethal. I, I think I have, what, two left in the main deck? Uh, attacking with the Gear Hulk. They block with Demon, they block with Ballista. I kill one and not the other. But that might be the best that I get out of it. At this point anyways. They can't just block with the Hissing because I have Trample. and they, So they have to block with at least two creatures here. 
It's possible I would just wait one more turn, though. Play out the Cub and pass. Alright, the Ballista's on four. You know what would be a really solid draw? A uh, Green Belt Rampager. Because I could use up my energy on every Cub, and so I could just continuously play the, the Elephant for extra energy. Alright, another land the draw for the opponent there. My draw for the turn. Ugh, a Blooming Marsh. And yeah, this, this game is just getting out of hand for me now. Again, the, the Walking Ballistas are just threatening. Every turn I pass, it just tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick, tick. All right, Grim Flare from the opponent. And soon they're probably going to start attacking with their Mind Rack Demon. If I'm going to draw a land, Hissing Quagmire is not the worst. Any creature now threatens lethal, of course. But... Soon the opponent's going to be able to pump up a Ballista twice a turn. In fact, they can do it right now. They have access to 8 mana because of the Rishkar ability. Oh, man. <laughs> Am I actually dead? For... 13, 14... Oh, I am dead, aren't I? I'm just dead on board now. They pump Ballista, pump Ballista. Attack for 4 in the air, they can actually shoot me for 11. Darn it. Alright, I didn't even think about that. So I, I had to have attacked with the Verdurus Gear Hulk. Uh, maybe like 2 or 3 turns ago. Before they got the Grim Flare. That was the key. That's what I needed to do. Yeah. Wow. All right. And down we go. I will let the opponent shoot me for 11. Interesting game, though. Very interesting game. I think the difference was that heroic intervention. Just just protecting themselves for one turn. And also just eating my eating my Rish guard. They, so the opponent effectively had two removal spells, right? They uh, they had the Heroic Intervention and they top decked the Fatal Push for my Winding Constrictor after the fact. Whereas I only drew one Fatal Push and uh, a preemptive Transgress the Mind. But hey, interesting game. I think this deck is very sweet. Uh, this was Ken Yukuhiro's list. Remember, he went 9-1 and one at the Pro Tour with this list. So great outcome. Great deck if you want to try it out. Um, had a little bad luck here versus... Delirium, but overall, something I think you should de definitely check out. Thank you guys for tuning in for this edition of the Pro Tour Gauntlet with uh, Either Revolt. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we'll see you back next time.